We're only moments from the launch of the Concordia Space Shuttle. Ah, news. There must be something more important on. Something involving people getting dressed up as large chickens. Huh? <laughs> all right, all right. We'll watch this. Garfield, Odie, I need you to keep an eye on this ferret for me. Ferret? Aren't two mouths enough to feed, especially since one of them is mine? Liz is completely booked up at the vet clinic, so I agreed to watch over one of her patients here for a few days. She'd better not be contagious or too hungry. Depends. What's in it for me? I've just baked an extra large four cheese lasagna to make up for it. It's cooling off in the kitchen. Four cheese lasagna? <laughs> Trust, but verify. Congratulations, you have successfully bribed me into ferret sitting. I sell out so cheap. Oh, I'd better get going. I'll be back before dinner. The two astronauts should be boarding the space shuttle any minute now. Hey, guys, huh? I need to stretch my legs out for a bit. Zip it. We're trying to watch TV here. Just let me out for a bit. I'm a ferret. And ferrets need to exercise or else they go crazy. <laughs> <sighs> All right. All right, but don't mull any furniture. That's my job. Hi, this is John Arbuckle. Please leave me a message at the sound of the beep. Garfield, it's me. I forgot to mention. Don't let Mrs. Ferret out of her cage under any conditions. Liz put her on a strict diet and she'll eat anything. Now he tells us. Can you imagine how horrible it would be to be around an animal that will eat anything? Don't say it. The four cheese lasagna. Maybe we can stop her before she eats all four cheeses. You, you, you ate all the lasagna. What do you have to say for yourself? Yeah, that's what I usually say. Oh well, when John gets home, he'll make us another one, and another one, and another one. Huh? Hi, this is John Arbuckle. Please leave me a message at the sound of the beep. Hey guys, bad news. Oh, my car broke down. I'm afraid I have to stay over at a motel for the night. What? Aren't you glad I had time to bake you the lasagna? Just imagine if you had been left alone starving for an entire day. <laughs> The refrigerator. Let's see what's in there. Ah! You ate everything in the refrigerator except the ice cube tray and the light bulb. Uh huh. <laughs> Saving those for dessert. So what are you oh. two going to eat? Oh, I'll find something in John's cookbook here. Roast ferret, ferret stew. Hey, Odie, you in the mood for Chinese food? Here's a recipe for ferret chow mein. Uh, uh -oh. If you will excuse me, I, I have to go lock myself in the train. There's got to be something edible in this house. John always keeps one can around in case of an emergency. Quick, where's the can opener? <laughs> you want to give it a try? <laughs> Odie, you're too dumb to open this can. Just watch and learn. <laughs> Fine. I'll just have to use the electric can opener. No, you can't try now. It'll take more than a stupid piece of metal to stop me from eating the food that's inside this can. for the 1,000th time, I do not need your help. Just open up, you pesky piece of metal. Oh. 
problem. No, you cannot help. Let's run through this one last time. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> 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 Bodie, I don't know about you, but I'm getting really, really, really hungry. This is all your fault. Hey, Odie, have you ever noticed how much a ferret looks like a hot dog? What are you looking at me like that for? What is it? Why do you have that mustard and relish look in your eyes? I have to warn you, ferrets taste terrible. Mm. We all taste like asparagus. Mm. I like asparagus. Did I say asparagus? Grr. I meant tofu. Yes. Stale, dry tofu. I like tofu this with launch salt. This has been postponed for a few huh? hours huh? because of an huh? incoming storm. But huh? this should pass, and we will launch later this huh? afternoon. Brody, I think I have a new idea. Once a lightning bolt strikes, it will not only open the can, but it will also heat up the food. That is pure genius. You think you're gonna win, don't you? But you won't. You will never defeat me. Really hate canned food. Cheer you up! My cat always comes purring whenever he hears me open a can of his favorite delicious cat food. <laughs> Oops, you don't want to watch that. The storm seems to be passing. <gasps> yes, it looks like we should be able to launch the space shuttle in approximately 30 minutes. Come on, I know how to get this can open. <laughs> We didn't have time to go to the restroom. Wait, if we're down here, then who's up there? Good thing we kept those spacers. <laughs> okay, Ken. You thought you were indestructible, didn't you? Well, let's see how you'll survive a fall straight down to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! My new hybrid flying saucer! Take this, you wretched space garbage! Hey, go pick on someone else's can of food. By the seven rings of Arcturus, this mysterious object is resisting my disintegrating anti-molecular magma beam. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look too wonderful, Odie.
Peter? That was Harry. Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Defeated by a can of cat food. Oh, the shame. Oh, the humiliation. All right, all right. After all that, you want to see if you can open it? Well, be my guest. <laughs> Meow. Odie, before I say or do something I'm going to regret, I'm going to do something drastic. Huh? I'm, I'm going to end this cartoon. doesn't understand how much work it is to run a farm. Neither do I. What's so hard? Your farmhands plow the fields. All you have to do is feed the animals. Do you know what it's like to feed all those hungry mouths? Doc Boy, I feed Garfield and Odie. Uh, well, you got a point <laughs> there. And don't call me Doc Boy. Say, where is Garfield? Come on, come on. Drive me back to civilization. Garfield doesn't like it here on the farm. Anyway, I still say feeding animals is easy. And I still say you don't know what you're talking about. And I still say, let's go home! He works much harder than you think, John, and I still think you need to take a vacation. Well, one of these days. I'd better get Garfield home before. Here's your question, Garfield! Yoo-hoo! Your emergency order! Pizza! All right, we'll go home. Wait. Huh? I have some fighter pilots airlifting pastrami sandwiches. Come back Bye. soon. See you later. So long now. Now about that vacation. Oh. But who take care of the cows and the horse and the chickens and... You can find someone. You're right. I can, and I know who. Visiting my brother yesterday was fun. No cable TV. Oh, that farm of his is so cool. Roosters are crow at 5 a.m. And the air smells so great. If you like the smell of cow. Huh? Oh, I wonder who this is. <laughs> Doc Boy, Gloria. Hello, John. And don't call him Doc Boy. Doc Boy and Gloria. See, even they couldn't stand it out on that farm. So I finally persuaded him to take a vacation. And I don't even know where we're going or when we'll be back. Hey, why don't we visit that relative of yours you told me about? Huh. Which one? Her name was Aunt something? Aunt <laughs> hey, <I'm in. laughs> Yeah, I mentioned her. Don't worry, folks. She's not in this episode. It's safe to watch. So, who's going to take care of all your animals while you're away? Someone who said he thought it would be easy. Me? Oh, no. I don't have time to go up to your farmyard. Who said anything about taking care of them in my farmyard? <laughs> I don't like the nearness of that move. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Couldn't have put it any better myself. Doc Boy? Doc Boy? We left plenty of food and audio instructions on how to feed them. We'll see you when we get back from our vacation, <laughs> whenever that is. <laughs> <laughs> and don't call me Doc Boy. In a situation like this, there's only one thing to do. You with me, Odie? We'll be 
at a hotel until the animals are gone. Oh, no! You're not running out on this. You're going to stay and help me take care of those animals until Dog Boy and Gloria get back. Whenever that is. We'll just keep the animals in the backyard. It won't be so bad. Unless, of course, it starts to rain. Oh. <sighs> you had to say that, didn't you? Come on, let's get them inside. The weird part is, this is the cleanest this house has been in months. I don't think they left us nearly enough food. I'm going to run out and get some more before the store closes. Here, my brother left this CD called How to Feed Farm Animals. Play it and do as it says while I'm gone. If you don't feed them, I don't feed you. Good. I'll be back as soon as I can. All right, let's see what this thing says. Hello. Welcome to How to Feed Farm Animals. Lesson one, chickens. Spread chicken feed evenly on ground. All right, I'll try that. Supper time. Get your delicious chicken feed right here. Come on, what are you waiting for? Would you eat that? Probably. There's not a lot I won't eat. <laughs> Try it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Woo. We got to get you something better than that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why do you have to do that? Because I just love to go. It's in my soul. It's in my heart. Yeah, but it's also in my ears. I can't help myself. I have to go. Well, then I'll help you. Step right in here. Mm. <laughs> Okay, let's see what's next. Feeding goats. Many people think goats eat tin can. This is not true. They merely like to lick the glue that is often used to put a label on a tin can. Oh, that's so good to know, Mr. Voice. Here, I know you don't really eat tin cans, but... What was in that when it was full? Spaghetti, I think. Oh, great. You get the spaghetti, I get the empty can. Well, now, wait a minute. Hey, you dropped something on the ground behind you. Huh? I don't see anything. Oh. <laughs> We've got to get you some better food, too. Feeding horses. Horses eat hay. Odie. Bring the hay in here. <laughs> hey, it's your hay. I'm not eating that. You know what hay tastes like. It's dry. It's tasteless. It's, it's... Like John's meatloaf? Well, probably not that bad. Wait here. <laughs> here, there's no food on earth that can't be made edible with enough ketchup. Bon appetit. Wow. <laughs> My mistake. This isn't ketchup. It's ultra powerful hot sauce. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that, but I'll make it up to you. I'm gonna give you guys some real food. Let's see, yesterday's macaroni, leftover Chinese food. So much better than Jim Cans. Yeah, this is so much better than what Dog Boy features on the farm. We're never gonna leave this house. <laughs> oh no, we can't keep them here, Odie. It's time to take drastic steps. More drastic than that. More drastic than that. Even more drastic than that. Oh. 
there are any small children watching, they should look away from the screen. This could be really scary. I know I said Ann Ivy wasn't in this episode. I lied. Oh, John! John! I got your email inviting me to stay with you until Christmas after next. This is a this place looks like a barnyard. Even worse, it smells like a barnyard. Look at the feathers on that chicken. Look at the giblets on that turkey. Get that cow out of here. I'm lactose intolerant. Get that sheep out of here. I don't like wool. Tell that rooster if he doesn't shut up, he won't like what I'll cock a doodle do to him. But it's supposed to be our vacation. And it will be. But I'm worried about how my brother will take care of the animals. I just want to check and make sure they're okay. Oh, my animals! They're all running away! Oh. Come back! Come back! I'll take you all back to the farm! <laughs> problem solved. Oh, you're wondering about the bigger problem. The Aunt Ivy problem. I'm not staying in this Don't house worry. another minute. It smells like a barnyard and all the fur and feathers are... <laughs> Picking up my allergies. I'm going to stay in the most expensive hotel in town and charge it to John. Other problems solved. Now I have just one more thing to do. Remember the CD? Mm -hmm. I have to go online and find the guy who makes them. I have an idea. I don't know how you did it, Garfield. Doc Boy called and said he and all his animals are home safe on their farm and he'll find a sitter for them before he takes a vacation. Good. Okay, here. Listen to this. The CD player? Something on here you want me to listen to? <laughs> Hello. Welcome to How to Feed Garfield Cat. Lesson mm -hmm. one, breakfast. <gasps> Garfield enjoys a modest breakfast, including waffles with syrup, fresh berries, hot coffee with sugar, cream, and more sugar, buttermilk pancakes, coffee, patty, sausage, drinks, eggs fried, eggs scrambled, eggs poached on top of other eggs, lasagna, cold cereal, hot cereal, butter toast, bacon, more bacon, lots more bacon. You gotta admit. <laughs> Dinner? She's a coming right oh. up, my friends. Oh, great, huh? Pookie. It's supper time. A personal sized pizza for Signore Arbuckle. A oh. puppy dog sized pizza for Signore Puppy Dog. <laughs> <laughs> and huh? Garfield sized pizza for Signore Garfield. Oh. Hey, I distinctly recall ordering a large. Oh, oh well. Bon appetit, Pookie, my gastronomic friend. <laughs> Look at that yummy, cool yummy, teddy yummy, bear, yummy. Dad. <laughs> Eat your pizza before it gets cold, Jack. <sighs> oh, that was a nice, tasty pizza. On the small side, but tasty. Oh, what a shame, Pookie. You haven't touched your pizza. Well, we can't let it go to waste now, can we? <laughs> Boy, Dad, that's the neatest looking teddy bear I ever saw. I wish I had one like that. Really? You think other kids would want one? Sure. What's that, Pookie? Oh, now you're hungry. Well, I guess we'll just have to order another pizza then. Oh. Hey, I remember you. Arbuckle, right? How much for the teddy bear? Uh, I'm sorry? The teddy bear. I want to buy it. Oh. What? Uh, no, you can't have Pookie. No, 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 no. Not for all the lasagna in Italy. I'm sorry, Mr. Allwork. My cat oh. loves Pookie. And, huh? well, I just can't take him away because your son wants him. I don't want to keep it, Arbuckle. I'm CEO of All Work Toys, a very large company. I want to make duplicates of it and sell them around the world. Here's how much I'll give you as an advance. Are you allowed to have that many numbers on one check? Ah, Mr. All Work, you have a deal. Pookie is going to be a bestseller, Arbuckle. You and I are going to make a bundle. 
Hear that, Pookie? I always knew you were destined for greatness. What's that? You want to celebrate with five more pizzas? Well, if you insist. We'll have that duplicated and returned to you in no time. Take good care of him. What did you call him, Pookie? Well, we measured and studied every bit of him. <laughs> Here is the duplicate prototype we have created. He's... he's perfect! No, it know. isn't. Kids today have computers. They want high-tech, state-of-the-art. Does take the original back to Arbuckle? <laughs> Professor, I want you to upgrade and improve this toy. You know what to do. Indeedy I do. I shall give you the teddy bear of the future. And sales of the new toy known as Robo Pookie are setting new oh, records. Uh -huh. They just went on sale this morning and already thousands have been sold. I'm going to be rich! <laughs> and I'm going to be even richer. I bought commercial time in this news broadcast. Oh, Fluffy, why do you just sit there all day and do nothing? Are your children bored with their teddy bears? I sure am! Well, here comes the teddy bear of the future, Robo Pookie. Huh? Robo Pookie can sing, dance, exercise, play games, clean your room, and speak 17 yeah. languages. <laughs> Robo Pookie is the best nanny ever. And so the Princess Mary, the elevator repairman, and the rope happily ever after. Good night. I don't think you should see this. Robo Pookie is your child's very own private entertainer. You definitely shouldn't see this. Stay in here until this is all over. To be or not to be? That is the question. Yay! That's Robo Pookie, coming soon to a store near you. You're gonna love me and buy me. Whoa! This is awesome, Mr. Allwork. <laughs> there was nothing wrong with the original Pookie. Does. Let him have the one I brought. Here you are, sir. Huh? Hi, I'm Robo Pookie. Who wants to play with me? <laughs> Two playmates with one brain between them, and it takes batteries. <laughs> I've had enough of this imposter. <laughs> The nerve of trying to improve on the real Pookie. Except no substitutes. Each one has a computer chip to download software updates and to communicate with other Robo Pookies. It's great, Mr. Ulwark. I can't imagine how anything could go wrong. No, you're not! Go away! Sorry, I was just trying to help! Huh? Who is that? Huh? Do you know? 
know what time it is? Yes, it's 4 06 a.m. in New Delhi, India. It's 2 36 in the afternoon. <laughs> Would you like to finger paint? I just want to entertain you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In here, he won't find us. No <laughs> way! Huh? No, no, this is the real one, the good one, the one who doesn't do anything. Pick a card! <laughs> Any card! Yeah. yeah, leave us alone, let us sleep. But I am your friend, I just want to help you and entertain you. <gasps> he looks just like me. Huh? He is. I salute you, a worthy forebear, I kiss your feet in respect. I've been trying to get people to treat me like that for years. I will follow the wishes of the Grand Forebear. Great. The Grand Forebear says he wants you to let us get some sleep. As you wish. I shall remain here and bask in the greatness of the Grand Forebear. Fine. You stay there and bask while we go back to bed. I cannot keep your glory all to myself. Attention, fellow Robopokies. I have found the Grand Forebear. Repeat, I have found the Grand Forebear! Come, gather before the Grand Forebear and pay your respect! Come, Robo-Pookies of the world! Use your global positioning systems to track the location of my transmission! Huh? It's 5 a.m. Who's ringing the doorbell at this hour? We are here to pay our respects to the Grand Forebear! We are here to pay our respects to the Grand Forebear! <laughs> to the cat. Oh. Attention, my subjects. I command you all to follow me and the handsome cat. Ah. Repeat, follow me and the handsome cat. Do you understand? Yes, a glorious warrior. I got a call that a lot of Robo Pookies were being returned to my factory. But Dad, don't toys you make get returned all the time? Yes, but usually they don't march in by themselves. <laughs> They're all coming back! Every one of them! Every one of them that we made and sold, I'm going to have to give refunds on every one of them. Does that mean I'm not rich? You'll be lucky if you can afford a yo-yo. Huh? I, I should never have gotten into this pookie business. I like mine. That's the prototype we made, the one that didn't do anything. Yeah, I'm glad I have it. Why? What do you do with it? I don't know. Just love it, I guess. <laughs> well... At least I made one kid happy. And I guess I realized what I love about Pookie. He's a lot like me. Yeah, he doesn't do anything. Six 
lizard noses, two pinches of tarantula hair, a spoonful of moldy peanut butter. Oh, oh, <laughs> hello. I'm Mrs. Cauldron, your friendly neighborhood old lady, who might be a witch. Never more! Quiet! I have a story to tell. So, here it is, and I'm not saying it's true, but I'm not saying it isn't either. <laughs> It happened one day as I was flying home on my brand new Class 13 vacuum cleaner with full options, including parking sensors. <laughs> oh, this would be great. This is the bungee cord John used the one time he went bungee jumping. Not a successful activity. Bodie, wake up. You want to fetch the stick? Then go fetch the stick. I like Garfield, but there are times when he just goes too far. Hello, Odie. Now, you know why Garfield can do things like that to you, don't you? Because you're not that smart. And if you were that smart, you know that's the reason. Would you like to be smarter? A lot smarter? Okay, I'm not sure you'll like it, but here goes. <laughs> Odie always had a good heart, but suddenly he had a good brain to go with it. <laughs> oh, that was great. Huh, I wonder why the bungee cord causes someone to bounce around like that. Actually, it's all due to Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Oh, interesting. Thanks, Odie. Don't mention it. <sighs> Newton's third law of motion. I should have known. <laughs> Odie, you said something. Not only that, but it was something, you know, like intelligent. Ah, huh. well, maybe I just never had anything to say before. Oh. It was also a new experience for Odie, being able to do things he'd never done before. There you go. I changed the filter, tightened all the belts, and updated the software on your global positioning system. Well, thank you, Odie. I do hope you enjoy being intelligent. Of course. I can read and write and solve problems and fix things. Well, I just hope you keep feeling that way. Uh, one last thing, Odie. You can't tell anyone that I magically turned you into a genius or it will undo the spell. You'll immediately become like you were before. I'm smart now. I'm not dumb enough to let that happen. Good. See you around. Thanks again. Uh, for a while at least. I guess it was a good thing. Oh, I don't have time to play, Odie. I have to get my taxes done and it's just impossible. Oh, I need some coffee. I'm going to be up all night. Let's see, a form 2030 itemized deduction. What's he talking about? This is a breeze. He never said anything before. I've kicked him off the table 7,000 times. He never said a word except you. Yeah. I'm going to be up all night doing my taxes, Garfield. <gasps> Bodie, what are you doing in my chair? <sighs> you did my taxes? Yes, and I got you a refund. He looks perfectly normal to me, John, um, except that he's suddenly become a genius. Huh? I gave him an intelligence Ooh. test, and, well, let's just say he's twice as smart as we are. Twice as smart as either of us? No, twice as smart as you and I put together. If you'll excuse me, I have a sick pussycat that needs attention. What? Huh? Ah! 
It appears you've been eating too much mixed grill. Try switching to a low-sodium salmon mm. cap food. John couldn't believe how smart his dog was. He shot videos of Odie and put them on the internet. Ooh. Before long, Odie was famous. The smartest dog in the world. That's what they're calling him since his online videos have had 50 million hits. My Odie? On Monday, he became the world champion of chess. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I can't believe it. I just got checkmate by a dog. <laughs> on Tuesday, he went on a game show. Odie, for a small fortune, when they built the Great Wall of China, who was the foreman? You've written Chin Lu Hao. That is correct. That's absolutely correct. You win the small fortune. Odie promptly donated the entire small Ooh. fortune to a worthy charity. I thought he was supposed to be smart. And perhaps most impressive, he figured out how to set up one of those beach chairs no one can ever figure out. for 22 years to understand how to open that chair. In just a few short days, everyone around the world has become excited about Odie. This is your gossip reporter, Brandon Scoops, signing off. <sighs> You're just jealous because Odie's getting all this fame and attention. Oh, great. Now I have a smart mouse, too. And someone inside the world wasn't too happy, either. He was Emperor Glorm, ruler of the kingdom at the center of the earth. I've been trying for 22 years to understand how Emperor to open Glorm, that chair. do you think that dog is really as smart as they say? Hmm. Smarter! And that worries me, my loyal sloth people. That canine is smart enough to lead the surface people to conquer us! <laughs> Of course, if we captured him, he could tell us how to conquer the surface people. I'm sorry, my dog can't help you. Everybody He's busy. wants Odie to solve their problems. Odie, do you think you can solve mine? I'll try. What is it? I have a lousy part in this episode. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I think I can solve your problem and my own by getting out of this house. Where are you gonna go? I don't know. Huh? So, Oli made a hasty exit, leaving Garfield to deal with the mobs of people outside. I know how to handle this. Please, people, I'm telling you, my dog can't solve all your problems. No, but your cat can. Yes, it's me, Garfield Cat. I'm here to share my colossal brain with you all. Ask me anything. I want to talk to the dog. I want to talk to the dog. I'm going to bed until this episode is over. Meanwhile, Odie was trying to figure out the one thing he didn't know. Why being so smart was more trouble than being stupid. Hey, Odie, can you tell me how to run my comic book shop so I can make more money? Hey, Odie, can you tell me a good way I can catch a dog? Like, say, you? Hey, Odie, will you do my homework for me? Everywhere he went, somebody wanted something. But finally, he was alone. <sighs> or so he thought. Hey, let me go! Unhand me! So... This is the smartest dog in the world. <clears throat> well, smart dog, I trust you are smart enough to know that your survival depends on you helping me to conquer the surface world. Why me? What do you want with me? You have knowledge. Knowledge is power. And I want power. Tell me, dog, how did you get to be so smart? Odie tried to think, but all he could think about was how life was so much easier before he got to be so smart. And then he remembered something he'd heard. 
You can't tell anyone that I magically turned you into a genius or it will undo the spell. You'll immediately become like you were before. I said, how did you get to be so smart? Well, a little old witch named Mrs. Cauldron cast a spell on me. This? Yeah. This is the smartest creature on this planet? Use the cerebral gauge. Measure his brain power. No discernible intelligence. We might as well return to our world below. That's really all there is to the story, I guess. Hey, Odie, can you answer a question for me? He went home dumb but happy. And he stayed that way. <laughs> so, here it is. And I'm not saying it's true, but I'm not saying it isn't either. <laughs> and best of all, I got my show back. Sure, I'm boy. Guys, a comic book shop actually wants me there today to sign autographs. They probably just want to see if you know how to write your name. Right now. Shh. It's my Cape Avenger costume. Just in case there's a world crisis or anyone wants my autograph. The shop's up ahead, guys. I'll bet there's a line all the way around the block of fans who want my signature. time is the line around the block getting here? I just love ultra-powerful guy comics. I can't understand it, Mr. Arbuckle. I advertised for weeks that you'd be here. I thought everyone who loves your work would show up. We are all here. They didn't turn out for you. They didn't even come to see the rarest comic book in the world, ultra-powerful guy number one. I thought people would come to see it if I had a copy on display. Isn't that worth like a million dollars? It sure is. The guy who loaned it to me insisted I hire a security guard to stand watch on it. But it didn't draw a big crowd either. Aren't there a few people in the store? Just a few and not enough. I've run out of ideas to attract customers. Looks like I'm gonna have to go out of business. I know what this store needs. Yes, it needs excitement. It needs celebrity. It needs an appearance by the most super of all superheroes. <laughs> the Cape <laughs> Avenger. Avenger, Avenger, Avenger. Hey, no snickering about the costume. Last week at a convention, I bought the entire run of Colossal Mystery Comics, 425 issues, all in mint condition and sealed in plastic. <laughs> if they're sealed in plastic, how are you going to read them? Read them? I got my whole life savings in this place, and I'm not making enough to pay the rent. Oh, don't worry, Rupert. Something will change. 
Fade will just walk through the front door. I'm here! <laughs> okay, well, now I'm over here. It is I, the Cape Avenger, 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 Avenger. No! It's a real life superhero. It's an overweight cat in a bad costume. Right both times, men. And now I will. <laughs> hey, whatever that was, I didn't do it. It sounds like it came from outside. My front window with the million dollar comic book. I repeat. I didn't do it. Not my fault, whatever it is. It's gone. The copy of Ultra Powerful Guy number one is gone. I'll call the police. Odie, be careful of that broken glass all over the sidewalk. Hello? Uh, I'd like to report a robbery. A very expensive robbery. Huh? How am I going to pay for that comic book? I'm ruined. All right, let's run through this one last time. Yeah, it's like I said, officer. This guy in a costume, he looked like a super villain, ran up outside the window and used some sort of superpower hammer thingy. He broke the window, knocked me out, grabbed the comic, mm. and disappeared. I see. You think you could describe him well enough that our police artist could make a sketch of him? I'll try, but he was wearing a mask. Odie, hmm? this looks like a job for... Fanfare? <gasps> The Kate Avenger! Avenger, Avenger, Avenger! Where's my trusty sidekick, Slurp? Oh, hi, trusty sidekick, Slurp. Where's your costume? Well, then dream one up. Use your imagination. How many times do I have to tell you the sidekick can't have a better costume than the hero? No time to change. There's a super villain lurking about. Let's roll! You're probably wondering if there's an origin story for the caped Avenger, Avenger, Avenger. Well, there is. Criminals are a superstitious, cowardly lot, so my disguise must be able to strike terror into their hearts. I will base my costume on the next thing I see. Senor, huh? here is the pizza you ordered. Of course it will scare everyone. It has anchovies on it. <clears throat> All right. Better? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Let's find a despicable repulsive supervillain to defeat. Wow. Because, because that's, that's what feels like us do, that's, that's why. why. Nope, no despicable repulsive supervillains around here. Let's eat. Cape Avenger! Cape Avenger! No autographs, and you forgot my echo. There's a despicable repulsive supervillain robbing the bank! Leaping lasagna! Wait, did you say he was despicable? Yes. And is he repulsive? Very. This sounds like a job for the, the Cape, Cape Avenger, 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 Avenger. Avenger. He's also very dangerous. This sounds like a job for the Caped Avengers sidekick. <laughs> Call me after you defeat him. I'll be in Bermuda. <gasps> there he is now. Hey, Caped Avenger, Avenger, Avenger. I just robbed the bank you keep your money in. What are you going to do about it? The thing any self-respecting superhero would do? Move my money to another bank. <laughs> no, it's too late. He's already stolen my money. We have to get it back. Onward, overdressed sidekick. We are here. Want to give up? No. Even though I have incredible speed? Watch this. I'll run completely around the world. <laughs> Sorry I took so long. There was a traffic jam on a highway in Luxembourg. So. Want to give up now? No. Even though I have incredible strength, watch as I lift the heaviest object around here. Me. John was right. I need to lose a few pounds. Want to give up now? No, I think I'd rather do this. I think I'll give up the part about arresting supervillains and just wear the suit and look cool. 
Odie, I came through the wall this way, and the bricks are out here. Huh? Odie, I think I solved the crime. Huh? Yes, crashing through that wall like that reminded me of a story I once read in an issue of Ultra Powerful Guy. Come on. Ultra Powerful Guy, Ultra Powerful Guy. Ah, here they are. Now, which issue was it? Nope, not this one. No, not this one either. <gasps> Wait, I think this is it. It is. Come on. I'll be honest with you, Rupert. The chances of us finding this supervillain and returning the comic book are very slim. So are my chances of staying in business. I have to go back to the police station. Wait, Wait. superhero to the rescue. <sighs> I don't have time to read comic books. Here, read this, read huh? these panels. What are you trying to get me to... Ultra powerful guy says when a window is broken, the pieces of glass travel in the same direction as the impact. Since the shards of glass were on the outside, that means the window was broken from the inside. That's right. The pieces of glass were on the outside. Which means whoever broke it did it from the inside. Uh, uh oh. Stop that man! Let's go! Somebody stop that guy! He won't get away! <laughs> Any idea which way you went, faithful sidekick? Thanks to your super-powered nose, we're on that trail. Sally is a dead end, but if he comes this way, he can use this board to get over the fence. Huh? I think I lost him. It's out of this yard. They'll never catch me. Another job well done by the Caked Avenger, if I do say so myself. And apparently, I have to. guard confessed. Oh, thank you, officer. <laughs> Don't thank me. The cat is the one who solved the mystery. Yeah, I did. I feel like that really good-looking blind guy in the cartoons with the big scared dog. Why so glum, Rupert? You got back the comic. Yeah, but I'm gonna lose the comic book store. Nothing I do gets customers in here. Excuse me, is this the place we heard about on the news? Where the superhero foiled a comic book robbery. It is! There's the Caped Avenger! Avenger, Avenger, Avenger. Looks like you have customers. <laughs> Lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Hey, Batman, eat your heart out. Hey, don't, don't crowd. There's enough of me to go around. Basket's all packed. Now, where again is this forest we're going to? I have a map. It's a remote area, and nobody ever takes care of the animals up there or feeds them. <laughs> you love feeding animals, don't you? Ah, look who's talking. Speaking of which, where are... Oh, Odie's watching a fairy tale on TV, and Garfield's upstairs asleep. Have you vanquished the evil witch in the purple pool? The huh? You should be waking up any minute now. Oh, what a strange dream. I was eating linguine and clams. 
Usually on Tuesdays, I dream about eating fettuccine and clams. <gasps> Let's see what time it is. Oh no, I'm missing my favorite show. <laughs> Search the kingdom to find his true love. <laughs> Thanks, Odie. I almost missed Eddie Gourmand. Today he's going to take a look at spaghetti and meatballs. Welcome to my show, people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. On today's show, we're going to look at spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? This is the best show on television, apart from mine, of course. Oh, oh, I've gained three pounds just watching it so far. Odie, you'd rather watch some fairy tale than look at spaghetti and meatballs? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> For the benefit of those of you who just joined us. We'll be looking at this plate of spaghetti and meatballs for an entire hour! <laughs> oh, and tomorrow is Chinese food day. We'll be looking at mugu gai <laughs> shrimp and oyster sauce, <sighs> chicken chow <tume>. mein! <laughs> Fairy tales are silly. I can make up a better story than this. <laughs> Liz and I are leaving. We'll be back late. Enjoy yourself, guys. We will. And don't get into any trouble. We will. You want me to read you a fairy tale? I have important things to do. Naps. More naps. Naps during other naps. Huh? Uh, okay, we'll wait here a moment. <laughs> oh. Ah, ham and cheese on sourdough with brown mustard. That picnic basket looked heavy. It seemed lighter just now. About the weight of a ham and cheese on sourdough with brown mustard. Hmm. Ah, this one will do. Huh? 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 All right, let's see. Once upon a time, I've read this story. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, once upon a time, there was an extremely handsome cat. You want to know how handsome this cat was? <laughs> that handsome. Who is the cat who people celebrate? Me. It's me. Who is the one they all appreciate? Me. Yes, me. Who is the slyest? Who's on the rise? As you can see me. Still me. Who is the highest? Who takes the prize? Me. Not you. Me. Who wins the test? Above the rest. By now you've guessed. You're impressed that I'm so blessed. I must suggest it's me. The very best it's me. He lived a quiet but happy life within the castle. Sometimes he would eat. And sometimes he would sleep. And sometimes he would eat and sleep. Saves time. The magnificent cat's life was good, except for three problems. One was an extremely dim-witted dog that was always asking him to throw a stick so it could be fetched. That's what it says here. Do you think I'm just making this all up? 
Fine, let's move on. Where was I? Oh yes, uh, asking him to throw a stick so it could be fetched. Mm. Oh. All right, all right, just to be rid of you. For those of you who don't know, this is called a catapult. Catapult is an ancient weapon invented by Greek soldiers to hurl large boulders at their enemies. But it's even handier for this. <laughs> See you sometime around Halloween. So the dog with the long tongue was one of his problems. Another was the prince's twin nieces. There he is! I am so doomed. Let's play Let's Let's do his No, don't. Opera. Stop. We'll Call the palace guard. guard. Call the royal Let's babysitter. Call I'm the fashion really police. Yeah. What's 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 the They'll smell so sweet. They'll look gorgeous. The worst part is I didn't even look good in this color. <laughs> <sighs> and the cat's third problem was his master's problem. Prince John had to find a bride, and he needed one soon. But I do not want to marry any of the women at the royal ball last night. Look, I'm just the royal food taster around here, but I know this. Royal law says that if you don't marry by your 21st birthday, the next in line becomes king. And you know who the next in line is. Huh? Next in line was the royal viceroy. And he was not a nice man at all. All right, attention, peasants. When I take charge, I'll be instituting some new taxes. Let's see. Tax on inhaling, tax on exhaling, tax on holding your breath, tax on not breathing at all. I protest these taxes! Tax on protesting these taxes. A tax on tying your shoes. A tax on wearing loafers. What if we go barefoot? Uh, a tax on going barefoot. Thank you. All right, a tax on thumbtacks. A tax on putting ketchup on a cheese sandwich. <sighs> his greed will destroy this kingdom. Which is why you need to find a bride. And soon, like tomorrow. <sighs> Then marry I shall, even if I have to marry the next woman who walks through that door. <gasps> Who? Huh? Huh? Well, maybe I could keep looking for a little longer. You know, he doesn't look good in that collar. He had been dining with every available maiden in the kingdom and was down to the last three. People say you gotta help humanity. I say, what has humanity ever done for me? <laughs> Strike one. Me 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 and only me. Must you speak all evening about yourself? You are right, Prince John. Let us speak about you now. What do you think of me? Strike two. So, uh, uh, tell me a little about yourself. Uh, I'd like to get to know you. Uh, Strike three. She's out. Boy, can you imagine trying to live with someone like that? It was about then that the not all that smart dog finally got back with the stick. Oh, hi. Well, it looks like the prince will never find a bride. The evil viceroy will be our new king. Bad for the kingdom, but I don't care that much. Nothing that evil, power-mad guy does will affect me. Attacks on watching cartoon shows. Attacks on blinking. Attacks on dancing with a monkey. See, that doesn't affect me. 
Attacks on vigorous exercise. See, that really doesn't affect me. Attacks on eating pasta, tomato sauce, or anything that contains cheese. See, none of these things affect me. <gasps> Attacks on pasta? No, 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 no. Unfair. Uh, tax Brussels sprouts. Tax health food. Tax anything with yogurt in it. Just don't tax lasagna. Pop, we have to stop that man. We have to help Prince John find a wife. So the brilliant cat and the not brilliant dog were determined to... Oh, wait. Time for a burrito break. Wait here. And don't you go anywhere either. I'll be back in one burrito. Oh. 